We'll keep seeing a seesaw in the markets. Now, though, let's take a look at shipping because the port of L.A. had its busiest month ever in August, with imports crossing 500,000 units for the first time, and that is largely due to restocking by warehouses and retailers preparing for the end of the year. Peak season does usually run from August to October and might go some way to make up for the slowdown from the trade war between China and the U.S. and the slowdown from the pandemic. So to go into this story in a bit more detail, let's bring in Jean Siroka who's executive director of the Port of Los Angeles and can break all this down for us. Jean, we know this is normally a busy season for you, but how much does this year compare differently to other years? Rosanna, it looks quite a bit different. We're still grappling with the trade tensions between the United States and China and obviously the shuttering of the American and global economies by COVID-19. But we are seeing the replenishment of inventory through the omni-channel distribution network mainly for our big box retailers, home improvement stores, and others who remained open during the emergency orders. As you mentioned that, there, there's a couple of different elements feeding into this, the pandemic, we've got an ongoing trade war, we are heading into election, we don't know whether we're going to get a Biden or a Trump outcome from that and how things are going to change for you guys there in the US. As a port, how do you do your scenario planning? Well, that becomes the challenge. And just recently, I announced that we were going to increase our current outlook for the remainder of 2020 to about 8.5 million container units. And that's up from the 7.9 million I forecast back in May. And shortly before then, we looked into the abyss of March this year. And now cargo flow is double what it was in that month. So I think we've got a little bit of an outlook and it really is geared towards the signal, which is a control tower view here at the Port of Los Angeles powered by our port community system, the port optimizer, that gives us that view that not too many others have right now. So we can see upstream volume that'll be heading our way. We can plan staffing and assets, but more importantly, also give uh, information to the marketplace as to what we're seeing as a leading economic indicator. Gene, I know the shipping industry and uh, the port authorities, etc., are largely uh, regime agnostic. But what would you say you would like to see, and what would your colleagues like to see from uh, whether it's a second term uh, Trump administration or a Biden Harris administration, whoever's in the White House? Is it uh, an infrastructure reboot in terms of policy action? What do you want to see from the administration? Well, nothing's going to happen overnight, Sri, but a couple of things do come to mind. Uh, We need to resolve these trade tensions and go back to work on what those relationships really are with our trading partners. And that's the basis for everything that we do. Second, we must have a national export program. Right now, with this uptick in volume that we've discussed, we are now at five imports to every export. And that's the widest trade gap we've witnessed at the Port of Los Angeles in some time. It puts pressure on our service providers, the round trip economics they try to earn, and again, trying to bring back some of those 55 million Americans who have declared for unemployment, get them back on the jobs and help our American economy reemerge. We would like to see an infrastructure play and a broad look at what a multimodal funding program would be here for the supply chain in the United States. Gene, and uh, if you could uh, read the tea leaves for us uh, as far as trade flows are concerned, uh, how is it looking in the final quarter and heading into uh, 2021? Yeah, and that's the question we're looking at right now, too, Sri. Uh, The month of September looks strong. We'll probably be in the neighborhood of 900,000 container units. October to kick off Q4, also strong, including that National Day holiday week that we traditionally witness in in China. So we'll be at about 800,000 container units there. And early indications for November are a little bit better than expected. So this replenishment will continue on the import side, but exports still wane. They've been down 21 out of the last 22 months here in the U.S. 
Can you give us a sense of where you're at on fuel? Because I know you saw August imports of fuel cargo surging there at the port. And with regards to export, we know U.S. gasoline demand is dramatically down, but the U.S. exported 3 million barrels of oil a day last week, and that's up from 2.6 million a week before. So where are you looking at in terms of fuel at the moment? Well, we have an oversupply of fuel, Rosanna, and really because most of us here in America have been telecommuting, working from home, we're not traveling on airplanes. In fact, our own LAX airport at its bottom was down 97% in takeoffs and landings earlier this year. So fuel storage is at capacity, and routinely here in Southern California, we have a number of ships set at anchor awaiting instructions as to where to move their fuel. So those export opportunities will continue to be welcomed by us here, but looking to see consumption grow as well as the American economy attempts to reopen. Gene, uh, perhaps I might be uh, oversimplifying it uh, to a degree, but what you guys do, it's like almost getting a giant Lego set right, getting all these containers onto the container ship in the most uh, cost-efficient and timely manner. So I'm just wondering, to what degree has uh, digital helped you and uh, sped up productivity gains? Uh, it's been great, Sri. And, and again, with our lead on this starting back in 2015, we saw an opportunity for our supply chain to find efficiencies between 8 and 12 percent. The only thing is we need to see others adopt this same digitization strategy. And that's why I've called for a national port community system, one that can set agreed upon standards with open architecture to allow for our importers and exporters to have choice and visually look through that one screen to assign containers with rail, truck, and ship service and allow them to reconnect with their overseas customers. This is a piece of work that is crucial to our nation's competitiveness. Absolutely, towards a more uniform uh, standard. Gene, we've got to leave it there. Great conversation with you, sir. We wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much indeed for uh, those insights. Gene Soroka there, Executive Director of uh, the Port of Los Angeles.